Today we are continuing with sexual frustration. Hello, Dr. Willow. Hi, everybody. Hi, Leah. Hi. Woo, sexual frustration. Nobody likes it. It's no fun. <laughs> it is it's no not fun. not meant for a vital, happy life, but mm -mm. it goes around. It's very common. So it if you're sitting in the middle of it, just know that you're not alone. You're so not alone. In fact, I don't know anyone who hasn't gone through periods of feeling really sexually frustrated. This week, we've got a couple things we want to focus on about separating the roles of giver and receiver. I think that this is a powerful place for couples to gain mastery over certain techniques and in solving particular sexual issues. For one, I really like it if... I know what my job is. I can just focus on what my role in the connection is. And that's what separating the role of giver and receiver can really offer us. As the receiver, I just get to pay attention to sensation and tracking sensation and treating my experience like a meditation. Even if what it's sensing is numbness or boredom, or frustration. But to be in the present moment with that is how we transform some of those sensations that we wish were different. We got to stay right there with them first. As the giver, I love to practice my skills of providing certain techniques, but most importantly, being with my partner for every part of their experience and guiding them with their breath and playing with the touch and transmitting the energy so that they can feel more love. Willa, what do you have to say about using the roles of giver and receiver, separating that to start to target frustration? One of the most important things about being in the receiver position is it's a skill that we never learned and we never really thought was valuable growing up, generally speaking. Something really powerful happens to you on a visceral, somatic, and body level when you drop into receptivity. It's a superpower. I believe it's the most powerful force of the feminine. And we all have feminine energy running through us. So when we get the opportunity to just be the receiver in a tantric or sensual exploration session, something very powerful comes alive inside of you. And you realize that you don't have to be a certain way or look a certain way or show up a certain way in order to be of value, in order to be loved. It's incredibly juicy and powerful for men and for women and for everyone in between to be in that receptive place for a full session, which could be 45 minutes to an hour and a half to two or three hours sometimes. This is a common thing. Oh, I really like your earrings or your hair looks pretty or oh, you're very handsome or whatever. And the other person will be like, Oh, thanks. You're handsome too. Oh, thanks. You look nice too. They want to deflect and give back right away. They don't really drop into the full receptivity of what's possible. Doing these lover sessions where you get to really fully be in that receptivity, it builds your muscles. It builds your capacity to be in receiving in all of your life. Then when somebody gives you a compliment, you just say, oh, thank you. And you take it in and you take that pause and you take that moment. And that is such an empowered place to walk around from. That empowered place is very magnetic. People then want to give you more compliments because when you think about it, when you give somebody a gift and they're like, oh, thanks, here's your gift. You know, and they barely even received it. They barely even took it in. You're like, oh, wait, I worked really hard on that gift. I thought about it. I went to the right store for it. I packaged it right for you. And you barely even received it. So right. there's a real giving in receiving. There's a real gift that you give to the other person when you really receive. And as you were saying, Leah, as the giver, when you're able to guide that person's breath and energy through their body, it's such an incredible gift that you're giving them. 
you're also receiving. You're also receiving the power that is ignited from guiding, from giving. Because we all like to give beautiful gifts to people, but we like them to be well received. So there's just a lot of magic in, in taking the time to separate the two. And then when you get into a sexual encounter where you're not necessarily playing those roles, it's much richer, it's much deeper because you can vacillate between those two roles together and create this dance that's really fun and powerful. Yeah, I agree. When you're both exchanging at the same time, you're both touching, you're both giving and receiving at the same time, that gets dramatically enhanced when you have practice of separating the roles of giver and receiver, because you've started to study the nuances of sensation, the energetics of erotic energy, the subtlety turn on, you now have an expanded awareness of what is possible, how much more you can feel when you've had a chance to just meditate on your own body's experience. Time and time again, what people in our classes report when they come back from just practicing the role of giver without an agenda or an expectations to receive something back. When you show up just to give and you're not doing it to trade, you're not like, okay, I'm going to do you so you do me. When that is off the table, what is remarkable, surprising, and so healing is that people cannot believe how sexually and erotically satisfying separating these roles really becomes. There's lots of ways to separate the roles of giver and receiver, whether you're kissing whether you're making out, whether you're doing a sexual healing practice. One of the places that I've seen this be very powerful is with men who want to last longer in bed. I think a lot of partners don't realize how pivotal their support is to helping their lover learn a new skill set of expanding their pleasure potential so that they can last longer in sex. They can actually withstand the higher peaks of arousal without what I would say going over the waterfall, which would be ejaculating sooner than they want to. Yeah. If I'm helping my lover maintain and teach their nervous system how to last longer, it's wonderful for me to be the giver. They're the receiver. I start to work with a massage work with pleasure. I'm really closely watching their body language. I'm noticing the speed of their breath. And I'm noticing the signals that they might ejaculate soon. There's an art and science to this. With our limited time, we're not going to teach you all those techniques because we will teach that to you in our classes, but there's so much to gain and learn. You hold so much power in supporting your partner, feeling more powerful, feeling more confident, understanding and realizing that there's nothing wrong with them. It's just all about building more skills. Absolutely. A lot of times the finger gets pointed of like, you need to figure out this problem. You need to fix this. And blame and shame never get you where you want to go. They never do. So we want to start to look at ourselves. Where am I lacking skill? Where am I not able to help my lover stay connected to his arousal scale, stay connected to where he's at in his journey toward orgasming and ejaculation. Okay, so he's at, a, he's at a five and he usually orgasms at a six, so he's right on the edge. Whereas I'm over here hanging out at a two or a three, I'm not even anywhere yet. So I've got to roll him way back. How am I going to roll him way back? And there's techniques and there's pulls, but then there's also the energetics and just the presence and the love that you bring to really help them stay with you. No one teaches us anything about separating the roles of giver and receiver when I was coming of age. I mean, maybe if it was like a blow job or something or going down on someone, well, that's about the only time I remember anything really being separated. This is taking a look at our sexuality as an art form where we get to slow things down and our skill up levels. A lot of times we're hurting on the path of love. I think it's so common for us to see things as a problem. I'm broken. There's something wrong with me. I had this trauma or I have this dysfunction or I'm inadequate. By the way, everyone feels that way at some point and for long periods of points. So you're not alone. You're not a unicorn. This is the human condition. We can walk ourselves out of that suffering 
by understanding and studying this thing called love making. <laughs> and what I love about the ancient Eastern practices of looking at love and relationship and spirituality is it gives us a roadmap that our Western culture really has not developed. And so we can borrow that wisdom and apply it to our modern day lives. It's so true. And the art, when you start to become an artist of sexual mastery, it's so fun. It's so deeply healing for you, for your level of confidence, your self-worth, all of that, but also for the partner that you're with. It can heal and eradicate traumas and shame and guilt and things that have been in place since the very beginning of somebody's life without having to unpack all the story and my dad and my mom and my kids and my brothers and blah, blah, blah. All the story just doesn't matter. And this amazing transformative healing happens. Yeah. That just completely changes a person's, it changes the way they look, the way they hold their bodies is different, but also the way they're looking at the world is different. Leah and I are going to be offering a class for women this month to learn the skills, to be that amazing support person for their partner so that their partner can last longer and feel more confident in themselves and their abilities. We're teaching women how to move away from emasculating men for having challenges with coming too soon and moving more towards the mastery of I love all of you and let's try these techniques and let me stay present with your energy and keep you with me as I build my own arousal skill. So we'll be looking forward to that. You're going to get a sneak peek at what we teach men about how to last longer. You're going to learn all the techniques that we teach them. And it's really important for the lover of these beings to learn these techniques too. You're going to be able to be a little fly on the wall. And it's powerful. So we'll keep you updated. Willow, have a fabulous day. Love you. Thank you, darling. I love and love you. all of you. Happy, happy Friday and have a great weekend, everyone. Yeah. See you next week. Love, love, love. Cheers.